Hey everyone, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com um, with a quick tutorial uh, for Cinema 4D. So what I'm going to show you today is this method that I, I worked out. It's pretty simple really, um, but it's very useful. Now you know those kind of topological landscapes that you can get where the uh, landscape is kind of sliced up. Um, let's just jump over to the internet. Um, a few years ago at Node, I did a presentation about procedural versus handcrafted and one of the projects I talked about was um, this that you can see here um, and you can see this kind of sliced landscape over here on the right hand side and this was a job that I did for um, Penfold Wines. Um, yeah 251 views really popular this this video. I don't think people know these are out there actually because um, you know there's some great node presentations and they're definitely worth checking out i mean this one up here from gareth and lucas from buck is awesome and look it's only had 127 views so yeah um, that's my other tip is to go and check these out they're they're pretty pretty good if you go to the hello lux youtube channel there is a presentations playlist if you come in here you can see that we've got um, a whole bunch of presentations that i've done at different events around the world um, so yeah, there you go, a bit of a shameless plug there. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to create those kind of sliced effects on your geometry. Back in C4D, you can see I've got a sphere um, and a spline. And the spline has just got two points. And if we come to the side view, you can see that um, there's a top, there's a bottom. So it's a dead straight spline running through. And this is a method that I showed in that node presentation that you can use the Voronoi fracture to create slices through your geometry. So if we hold down Alt with our sphere selected and come up and add Voronoi fracture, you can see by default it creates all of these um, fragments. I'm just going to hide the edges there. But if we come to the Voronoi fracture sources tab and delete that point generator, and instead of using that, we grab our spline and drop that in, you can see that it creates these points along the spline and it uses those to create our um, fragments. Um, we can select that spline in the sources and we can adjust the number of points um, to increase the number of slices. So that's kind of quite a nice easy solution to create these slices and in the presentation for Node the method that I used was to actually come here and choose selections and create the um, break edges and then if you make that Voronoi fracture editable, we can come down here and you can see we've got all of those parts and we've got these edge selections. And if I double click that, you can see it selects the edges along here. So the trick that I used was to delete that top edge and then extrude all of these up. Now it worked fine for that project, but of course it's a really, really destructive workflow. And I wanted to find a way of doing that without um, actually having to make the Voronoi fracture editable. I wanted to be able to come in here and easily adjust the amount of um, slices um, and the thickness of them um, while leaving everything fully procedural. Back in 2016 when I originally created that project the Voronoi fracture object was actually still in beta. It was announced I think September um, and, and that project was created beforehand. Um, since then there's been another round of development. There's been some new features added to the Voronoi fracture which make this whole process a lot simpler. Um, if we select the object and come to the object tab you can see we've got this offset fragments that wasn't there in the original version but that allows us to create these gaps between all of the fragments and when we slice it up like this it allows us to basically change these slices to become really thin and the trick to this technique is to actually make them as thin as possible so if we come in and hold down alt and just drag eventually what will happen if we keep doing this is they'll just disappear but we don't want that to happen of course um, so once we've got them to a reasonably thin state, we can come to the Voronoi fracture, choose MoGraph effector, add in a plane effector, switch off position, and instead of that, what we're going to do is we're just going to scale this up. So if we hold shift and drag on the Y parameter for scale, you can see, there we go, works a treat. And now we've created some slices nice and quickly and kept everything procedural. Now, because we have kept the Voronoi fracture um, as a generator, we haven't made it editable as, as I did before, we can easily come in here, if I just switch off this plane effector, and we can um, come to sources, select our line spline, and maybe we want to have twice as many, and we can set that to say 200. Now of course they disappear because our offset fragments is too high, so if we set that down to say 2, you can see there they all are, and now we can enable our plane effector once again, and I think probably we need to just come in and adjust the scale. 
So there's a bit of to and fro in and balancing those parameters, but it is nice because everything is um, still live um, and we can use this with animation, which is one of the advantages that which just wasn't possible with the method that I showed before. So if I, if for example, in here I've got a displacer, I can enable that and, um, you know, we get live feedback of this topological landscape and we can animate the number of um, slices by adjusting this source point amount parameter. And we can adjust the scale as well, depending on how thick or thin we want them. So it's a pretty flexible approach. It does have a few problems if you're not careful um, because of the way that MoGraph works, you can only do this effect on one of the axes. So you can see I've done it on the Y axis, but you can't um, use multiple scale. For, well, you probably could if you knew the maths, but I don't. Um, but if we grab this line spline, for example, and we move it so that it's off center, you can see that when it does the scale, it kind of creates this crazy skewed mess, um, which you don't want. Um, so you need to make sure that your um, spline is in line with one of the axes of the objects. And if you want to reorient the object, then you actually need to um, kind of do that at a component level. So because of this slight um, problem and also with juggling these parameters, I kind of thought I'd just build a little rig. So I've built a rig that makes this process even simpler um, and you can download that. There's a link in the um, blog post on hellolux.com um, and then you've got this set up to use in any of your projects. If you download the um, file, this is what you get. Um, so I've got this null object with everything in here and you can see I've got a Voronoi fracture. So you just put your object in here where this sphere is and replace that. And it's using exactly the same principle as before. We've got a spline coming through here. That's in the sources tab. But you can see that I've got um, some Espresso going on. And if we select the slicer here and go to the user data tab, we have some user data. So we can adjust the number of slices um, and then we can adjust the thickness of them. So it's just a little bit easier than juggling all of those parameters by selecting the different objects. If we have a quick look at the Espresso and you can see what's going on in here. So what you need to do is um, switch to like a side view, grab the start null here and you can move this up and down so that it's above your object. You don't really want to be going into the object because you get these weird results. So just make sure that that is above and this one is below your object. And you can see that that um, uh, links to the spline here so the points of the spline are connected to those nulls it's just a little bit quicker and easier um, and also with these start and end nulls I have some constraints on them here so that if we try and move them away from um, you know zero on x and z then they just jump back so it stops that kind of weird scaling issue that I showed you before the next thing that we have going down here is that we take the spline and we get the length of it and we divide that by the number of slices and we use that with some maths to offset the fragments in the Voronoi fracture. And at the same time, we use the number of slices parameter to control the number of slices by adjusting the um, point amount here in the sources tab. Um, we can enable and disable this. And also we can adjust the thickness. And this just uses a range mapper. And we use this to control the scale Y parameter here on our plane effector. So it's nice and simple, easy to use. And I hope you guys out there find that useful. One last setup I wanted to share with you, and that is using the slicing setup in combination with the Cinema 4D Volume Builder and Volume Mesher. So in this scene, you can see I've just got an extrude object with some type. Um, so of course, it's uh, still nice and procedural and editable. Um, and I've put this in a Volume Builder, and you can see I've then I've got a group field on top, and this group field has a random field in here. So if we enable that volume builder, and you can see this is set to use fog, it's just a bit quicker for these kind of effects. Um, you can see that if I scrub through that noise animates. And I've also got a smooth layer on here. Let's just enable the volume mesher so we can see the result of that. And you can see that that group field with the random field allows you to um, kind of eat away at the type. The reason I use a group field is because we could add in um, more fields on top. We could add in kind of like an invert, for instance, or we could use some curves to um, adjust the values. It's a little bit more flexible than just putting the random field directly in the volume builder. Um, if we come here and enable that smooth layer, you can see that we now get this sort of more of a globby smooth effect. And then if we take this setup, and you can see in here I've got a spline just as before, but this time um, that spline is uh, running along um, the Z axis, which is perfectly fine. And um, we have a plane effector set to scale along Z. 
If I enable the Voronoi fracture, you can see that we end up with um, slices, and I've just got a uh, plain effector here with a linear field to color that. And there you go, and you can see the kind of result that we get here. So now we're kind of creating the same thing as before, but this time with type. If you're interested in learning more about Cinema 4D, then please head on over to hellolux.com forward slash tutorials, and we have around 100 free tutorials for Cinema 4D here. Uh, we also offer professional training. So if you want to learn more about MoGraph and fields in particular, it might be worth taking a look at Learn C4D Fields in One Day, which covers 19 chapters of working with the R20 field system and also um, working with OpenVDB. So thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And as my lovely wife would say, cheerio.